Hello everyone, I'm International Master Georgi Bashvili. This is the stream of Level Up Your Chess for CoChess.com. Uh, let me know how can you hear me, if everything is fine, and I'll start. for the comments if everything is fine and I will start right now. Okay, I see. Seems like everything should be fine. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to talk about the art of defense at chess which is extremely important and serious subject. Uh, probably, most likely, you have seen some chess brilliances, beautiful chess puzzles, tactics, or just brilliant victories, and uh, there are just less information about defense. When you are from the side, when you get these tough positions, how to handle it, how should be your thinking process, and so on. On these topics we're going to discuss about today. Uh, yes, no, no, you didn't uh, miss anything, guys, I just started. Today the main topic will be the art of defense. So, in defense uh, there are several rules which you need to remember. First, identify the real threats. Uh, it happens quite frequently, actually, that uh, we don't like our position, our opponent is attacking our king or something like that, and it looks really dangerous, but you always need to figure out exactly what is your opponent's plan. Exactly what does he want to do. Just uh, thinking with emotions will not uh, give you any kind of uh, success in chess. Exactly with correct calculation process. It's extremely important, because probably you might have heard, about, have heard about the phrase I've seen ghosts. That's exactly on this topic. Second, keep all your pieces protected. Of course it's obvious and it won't suit to all positions, but most likely if all of your pieces will be protected, everything will be fine. Third, if you're short in space, when your opponent has a lot of advantage, space, maneuvering their pieces and so on, try to simplify. Exchange some pieces to get better position. And well, if you're in trouble and you're trying to protect yourself and you see that there is not much you can do, always you need to create a counterplay. Sacrifice some pieces or most likely create some material disbalances it will lead to at least messy positions, there is a big chance that your opponent might make a mistake, if it's not the only option for you to go. So, seems like everything is fine, and alright, let's start. So, the first position actually, which I want to show you guys, was played between two international masters, as far as I remember about them, between Ertruk and Chernikov, a long time ago. First of all, we need to evaluate the position properly. Check what's going on here. Well, materially we are down an exchange, but uh, we can just promote the queen on the next move, as you can see right there. Well, the point is that black's main threat is to grab the knight, and whenever we'll play some like king h2, black goes queen h3 checkmate. So, for instance, if we will just... Uh, promote to queen, which seems so obvious, black plays king h7, and unfortunately white doesn't have any plan to protect against this queen f1, followed by queen h3, checkmate. For instance, if we we'll play some regular moves such as queen f8, we have extra queen, but can do much, queen f1 check, king goes on h2, and queen h3 check. In other force, and now we have to find some forcing moves. For instance, if you will grab the rook, 
king takes it back and go for something like rook f7. Black just takes it and nothing really happens. Maxim we can just give him one or two checks. King goes on g8, queen b8, king h7 maybe, queen a7, king h6, and that's it. We have the same problem, we didn't really solve it. This queen f1 still comes next. That's why here a bit earlier we can't really promote the pawn to queen. Another option should be this check. What if we play rook a8? What happens? King goes on h7. We can give it a try and play rook h8, but it doesn't make sense. Still black takes it. We promote to queen. King goes up on h7 and nothing happens. Still we have the same problems. That's why white actually has the only solution in this position. We have to get rid of either this rook or this queen somehow. Do you have any recommendation, guys, how we can continue right here? Let me know in chat. Queen d8. It's absolutely right. Looks a bit strange, but this is definitely the best way to go here. We have to get rid of this queen. After queen d8, black is forced to take it, and white plays rook a8. Pins the queen and threatens to promote on the next move. If black will capture the rook, there will be takes a8, promote to queen, king h7, and obviously white will be winning here because we have extra piece and game is over. So after rook a8, if black plays something like queen f8, there will be still rook f8, king takes f8 and will promote and leads to the same position here. That's why after rook a8, black has only one defensive resource right now. They need to protect the queen on d8, which is rook d1. It's a really strong move. If we take the queen, there will be rook takes d8, and we can't promote the pawn. Therefore, after rook d1, we have to try something else. If we promote, this also looks quite bad. Because queen takes, rook takes back, and there is king h7. And... Yeah, we're just exchanged down, and we're going to lose the game. That's why we have another strong myth. We really want to promote the pawn somehow. So the best way to go in this case is rook c8. Well, we sort of block this queen's path on b8 square, and after rook c8 we threaten to promote the pawn. If black takes, we'll just take it back and everything will be fine. Black can't really do much about this, we're about to promote the pawn in any case. So they actually found a good decision, they actually made a good decision at this point and played king h7. Unpins the queen. White promotes and the game isn't over yet. The thing is that if they will just move the queen somewhere else, it doesn't really matter if he takes on h4 or goes for something like queen d3 or just whatever. Same thing here. Rook h8 checkmate is coming. So instead of him, now we threaten to make a checkmate on the next move. So after b8 queen, black has only one option to get rid of that. In this kind of tough situations, guys, if you don't see any clear way here, you always have to calculate with forced moves. And then eventually check if you have some positional move or some others. Rook f1 is the most obvious continuation right now, indeed. After rook takes f1, king takes it back, and black definitely needs to give some, try to give some perpetual checks. So, they try queen d3 check. Another option is to take queen d1. But, well, most likely it just transposes to another position. So, after queen d3 check, king goes on g1 and black played g5. The reason is that after rook h8 check, 
they can play King G6. And they will just get rid of the checkmate threats, and if H5, King goes on F5, and Black's position looks safe. But, here, instead of G5, there is another move which we need to calculate. What if Black plays Queen D1 and continues giving us some perpetual checks? What happens in this case? After Queen D1 check, we play King H2. There are no checks except G3. So black goes for this move, and now white needs to play really precisely. We have a couple of options, taking with the king, go on h3, king g2, or take the pawn. If we take the pawn, it leads to perpetual checks, because black has queen e2, king goes on h3, king f1, we can't go on g4 due to this queen f5 checkmate threat, and if we just go down, just perpetual checks and we can't get rid of this situation. That's why, after g3, taking the pawn is not a correct decision. We, If we play king h3, there will be queen h1 here, queen g1, it still leads to perpetual checks. And we have only one option left, which is king g2. Right now, black needs to react quickly. If they will just play something like g takes f2, there will be a checkmate in 1. So they are forced to play some checks. Queen d5. White takes on g3. Black can take on e5 because this pawn is already protected. So they choose queen d3. f3. There won't be any kind of checks anymore. And black plays g5. But in this case, there will be h5, actually, and it leads to winning position for white. How? There is, again, checkmate threat. There are no perpetual checks. So black is forced to play king h6 at this point. There is rook h8, rook h7. And it seems like black already holds the position. There is not much going on there. But it's not... It's not as easy as it looks like here. After rook h7, white plays queen f8, creates another threat. Only move, taking on h5, queen f7 check, again. Black has to move the king backwards, and, well, white couldn't really make a checkmate, but they get a lot of material here, and they chose queen e6. Queen goes back on g6, rook takes h7, King takes h7, and it leads to winning pawn endgame. But in the game, they actually played g5 right away, instead of queen d1, which actually is a correct decision. After that, white needs to play this h5, otherwise we don't even have any checkmate threats and black will manage to hold the position easily. So, the best way to go here would be to play h5. King goes on h6 with the same way. Rook h8, rook h7, another check. King h5 and queen goes on f7. Black is forced to move the king backwards and queen takes on e6. Queen g6, rook takes h7, king takes h7 and queen g4. Well, um, white won the game. But I'm not going to show you the rest of it, because it's not that interesting and it's not in the topic of defense here. But obviously black has decent chances right now to hold the position. So here, in starting position I'll repeat one more time, is that we should not give up in this kind of positions. And I've seen some games when even top one masters just resigned in this kind of positions, because they didn't know exactly what to do and how could they continue. So, calculate all forced variations. Let's check the next position right now. Let me see if there is any new comments and some new suggestions from the previous game. Hello, Ken. Rook f1, then queen d1 to try to get perpetual. Indeed, that's what they tried, but um, it doesn't work. 
we still get a good position indeed in the end. Okay, let's check the next position then. Here we go. Uh, this game was played between Igel and Sigurdsson long time ago. Um, I'll actually flip the board because we need to look at it from Black's perspective. First of all, when we look at it, we need to evaluate what's going on here to make the right decisions. Materially, it's even, but White sort of has some threads of capturing on h7. Our king doesn't look that nice, perhaps rook h3 in the future, and so on. So white actually has some good threats. But on the other hand, this queen is badly placed on this b3 and gives us some possibilities to move our knight away and create some dangerous threats. Well, in the game, they played knight d5. But knight d7 would have been slightly preferable. Before I go in details, I'll just continue evaluating the position properly here to understand what's going on here in general. Obviously, white has a good initiative. They have good possibilities of just capturing the pawn on h7, go for rook h3 and so on. But if we will just get rid of this dark square bishop, for instance, something like bishop e3 followed by g6, we'll just block this light square bishop and not much is going on. That's why playing knight d7 would have been the best. Bishop h7 leads to nowhere, because we simply take it. Let's say rook goes on h3, king goes on g8, maybe queen goes on d3 to create this dangerous threat, but we can just grab the bishop on e3. If rook takes or queen takes there, he won't have this checkmate threat anymore, so the only reasonable option is to play king h1, but in this case we just play bishop h6 and we just hold the position. Block the file and we're just two pieces up. So, if we'll just go back a little bit, we'll realize that bishop h7 doesn't work. This queen hangs, so another option would be to go for some like queen c2 to maintain pressure on this h7 pawn. But in this case, after queen c2, we can even just play knight e5. It's not that dangerous threat. Obviously he needs to take on h7. King goes on h8. I understand it looks scary, but it actually is fine for black. This is another example that you shouldn't really follow the emotions when you're trying to defend the position and look at some concrete continuations. Ask yourself exactly what is his threat. Well, if white plays rook h3, there is bishop e3 check. If the king goes on h1, there will be bishop h6 and black just blocks this h file. And if they take on e3, then we can even play queen c5. Pin the rook, there is no rook h3 anymore, followed by knight g4 on the next move. For instance, after rook e1, we play knight g4 and white has serious problems. So, if we'll just go back a little bit, we'll realize that knight e7 actually looks pretty decent. But in the game they played quite tempting move knight d5. It actually makes perfect sense. We hit the queen and we want to take on e3. In the end we want to win an exchange. I actually want to flip the board and look at it already from white's perspective. Do you have any recommendations, guys? What can we try as white? Uh, is the queen endgame where white was up upon theoretically drawn? Um, theoretically, yes, it is a draw, but uh, for human actually it's quite complicated because you have to play many precise moves. Where are you from? I'm from Georgia. But not the state in Europe. Yes, they could try this g6 to trap the bishop as well. I totally agree with you. So, suggestions I have, bishop takes c5 here. Well, if we take on c5 here, there will be queen c5 check. And unfortunately we have the same problem. When we move the king, just grab the queen. That's why in this case, we have to look for some concrete and dangerous threats. 
Well, after knight d5, first of all, let's make it clear. If we take bishop c5, we already mentioned about this plan. If we take the knight, we just grab the queen. That's not what we want to get here. And if we just move the queen away, which actually looks pretty logical continuation here, either on d3 or we can even go on c2, it doesn't really matter, he just takes on e3. Bishop takes h7 and king goes on h8. Can't do much about it. Queen hangs. If we take on e3, there will be bishop e3, and we will have even more serious problems here. If we play something like rook h3, which is also possible to make some sort of perpetual checks, maybe if we'll just move the bishop away, he just takes on c2 with a check. So unfortunately, nothing really happens next. Therefore, white needs to make some decision. It looks really interesting and difficult to play the right move. Such a double-edged position. Exactly, uh, that's what I actually wanted to show you guys, these double-edged positions. It's uh, interesting from both sides. So, let's check it actually. What happened in the game? Because they're in the comments, I see bishop takes h7, queen c2 and then taking on d5. Yes, indeed, this is one of the best. Okay, let me explain you guys. So, after knight d5, if uh, we move the queen we mentioned, if we take the knight right away we mentioned, so we have to take on h7. It's actually... we have to take it. We don't have any other option. But another option which is a bit interesting is c takes d5. He goes, rook takes b3 and bishop takes c5. But well, after bishop takes c5, we hit the queen. So, if black captures the rook or something like that, it will lead to queen e7. So, black just plays queen g5. It's important to play on g5. Otherwise, if we go somewhere else, we just grab the rook on b3 and white will get more than enough here. They'll have two rooks and two bishops versus queen and rook. Which is like rook and two bishops for a queen. White will be better. That's why black plays queen g5 and hits this c3, c1 rook as well. So if you grab this, it takes on c1. That's why the best move up for queen g5 probably would be to move the rook backwards, but he just moves the rook away and he will enjoy with his extra material. Well, white actually in the game took on h7, which actually is the right decision. And uh, after bishop h7, obviously, black can't take it because there will be queen c2 white gets rid of this annoying threat with a check and after king goes back now we take on d5 bishop takes c3 rook takes c3 c takes d5 maybe rook h3 to create another threat g6 and white can play queen d2 followed by queen h6 well, it will be double-edged, I would say. It looks like white is going to make a checkmate, but black has these possibilities of playing rook c8, and at some point queen f8 to go for a queen g7, but position obviously will be double-edged. At least white is not losing here, so they have got the good chances. That's why after bishop h7, black doesn't take it, and they play king h8. Here's the question. How should we continue right now? We still have a bunch of problems. If we move the queen away, we will have the same problem about knight e3 or bishop e3, which we actually already discussed about. Taking there or here. So we can't do that. We need to find something better. Any suggestions, guys? So at the end of the variation you can sacrifice the queen there after rook f1. This is one of the best defensive restores actually and I will show you, uh, once I'll show you the whole game, how it happened, I'll go back to this variation and answer this question. 
I'm going to give up the bishop and rook. Rook h3, queen d3. Bishop takes. Okay, I see several suggestions here. Let me tell you guys. Here, if we will just play queen d3, we'll still have, have some problems about at least knight e3 or even bishop e3 right here. Nothing changes. We take, knight takes it back and we can't deal with this position. We capture, takes on h7 and that's pretty much over. So um, here in the game what white played is quite interesting and pretty tempting. They chose rook h3. Looks logical. We sacrifice the queen and if rook captures on b3 there will be perpetual checks. Just go for something like bishop g6, king g8, bishop h7, and we just repeat the moves. Um, well, obviously black is not going to take on b3 right here. Also, after rook h3, uh, if black takes on e3 with a check, let's say bishop e3. We already had this position but previously, but... But if we move the king, there will be bishop h6. That's why white actually can capture it with the queen right here. And if we take it on e3, we just move the bishop away and that's it. Again, the same technique. Seems like black can't capture on e3. If they take it even with the knight, it will be even easier draw here with perpetual checks. So, after rook h3, we need to make... Pretty strong move. I'll just repeat the. Uh, I will just flip the board again, and we need to find the best defensive resource for black. Sorry for that, guys, for flipping the board. Sometimes as white, sometimes as black, because the position are just uh, is really interesting and double-edged. So both sides are quite interesting here. So how should we continue as white? And recommendations. Definitely white would be more than happy to get a draw here, because they're just about to lose this e3 bishop here and everything, so yes, they'll be really happy about it. So, what do you think? What did white miss in this position? No, queen h4, there will be rook takes h4, it won't help. Knight f4, you're right, knight f4 has to be played here. Such a weird looking move, but it actually wins the game. Let me make it clear for you. We hit the rook. White can't take the knight, because it's pinned. Capturing the bishop on c5 leads to nowhere, because we can just simply take it right there, or even take on c5, and then take on h3. We have a bunch of options, actually. And if they will move the rook away, they can stay along this h5. h4 is controlled by this queen. h5 is covered covered by this knight. h6 is impossible. And all of a sudden, white loses the game. We again hit the queen. We again hit the bishop. Hit the rook. There are no perpetual checks, because whenever he moves the bishop, we take on h3 with the check. Followed by rook takes b3. The solution was queen h4 followed by g5, that would be absolutely insane. I agree with you, actually. <laughs> it will look so nice here. That's why here, guys, uh, in this position, uh, rook h3, as I mentioned, was wrong. But we are not going to follow what happened in the game. Now we need to find the best option for white. Uh, and... I think somebody mentioned it earlier, this rook h3 and moving the bishop away, and that's the right time to do so. We need to play bishop e4 right now. Well, obviously he's going to take it. And after that, we have this rook h3 followed by bishop h7. We already have seen this trick. That's why after bishop e4, black plays g6. Important to cover these diagonal, otherwise they don't really get nice position at all. So, after bishop e4, right here, black responds, as I mentioned, with g6. 
We can try this rook h3 check, but black just plays king g8 and we have the same problems about this e3 bishop, about this queen being attacked on b3, so nothing changes for us. Therefore, after g6, white actually takes on d5. This is the best defensive resource in this position. Well, we give up a queen, but it's not as easy as it looks like. Rook takes on b3. We should take c5. We sort of have seen similar idea a bit earlier without taking on h7, if we were going to take on d5 right away. But now for bishop c5, black goes for queen g5 again. Hits this c1 rook. After that, actually, white could protect it, this position, because they play rook f1, they hit this rook, and this rook hangs as well on f8 and on b3. Well, black's best defensive resource here would be to play rook e3, to hit this bishop. Bishop takes f8, rook takes on e4, and white plays really incredible move right there. What is threat? The threat here is rook e2, to hit this weakness. For instance, d takes c6 looks so obvious, but there will be rook e2 hits this g2 pawn. If we'll play rook f2, it's a bad defensive resource because he just takes on c1. And if we'll play g3, there will be queen e3 check, king h1, queen e4, and there will be a checkmate. How to get rid of this rook e2? And at the same time, he wants to take on d5. Do you have any recommendations, guys, as white? Well? Why not f5 instead of g6? It would open up more files, uh, that's why. And the king will be even weaker. Why not queen c3? Uh, queen c3, you meant... In which position, actually? Well, queen couldn't go there on c3 because this uh, knight was standing on d5 all the time. So it's not possible. So, um, seems like rook c2, first recommendation, bishop h6, okay. Rook c2 looks normal, but as I mentioned, maybe at the moment we might survive of this checkmate, but he still takes on d5 and sooner or later we are going to lose the game. Because he already took this d5, we don't really have much of hope, he's going to capture this on e5 here, and what should we do in the future? That's why bishop h6. It's just strong looking move. It might look a bit strange here. He needs to take the bishop. That's literally the only option right here. If the queen goes somewhere else, for instance, on even e5 or let's say g4 to keep the same threat, okay? The difference will be that once we will take on c6 and he goes rook e2, we can even play rook f2. There is no queen c1 threat because our bishop is standing on this diagonal. That's why after bishop h6, obviously black captured on h6, and d takes c6. Surprisingly enough, now black is the one who should protect this position. c7 followed by c8 is coming. We can't play something like rook d4, because there will be c7. We can't bring it back, because he just takes. And if queen f8, he just promotes. We can try something like queen f8, but there will be c7, bring the queen here, there will be rook d1 followed by rook d8. We still will have some problems here. So, I'm going to flip the board one more time and ask you, how should we continue as black? Hello everyone, for those who just joined us, we're just checking some positions about art of defense. So how should we continue guys? Queen takes c1 uh, looks good, I agree, but uh, 
just takes it back and we have the same problems. Again, we just gave up our queen and we can't really hold this c-pawn. We need to do something about it. Queen e3 check. Indeed. We definitely need to play queen e3. That's literally the only option what we can try right now. So for queen e3, white can't play this rook f2 because this rook hangs on c1 obviously. So for queen e3, white plays king h1. Okay, we activated our queen, but we have exactly the same problems. c7 followed by c8. If you look at this position carefully, you'll realize that we really can't stop this pawn. If we can't stop this pawn, we have to create something more dangerous right now. Some attacking resources, maybe some sacrifices or something like that. We have to focus on another flank. Any recommendations? Please make sure, guys, that when you recommend the variations here, you calculate the c7 fall by c8. This shouldn't be dangerous anymore in your variation what you recommend. Rook takes c5, rook c5 is possible actually, it's definitely one of the best here. We can try. If you play rook e5, c7 and rook c5, he still promotes. Rook takes, rook takes and obviously black has normal chances, but Still after rook c7 and we're going to drop this f7 pawn, still unpleasant. Of course, there is still the whole game in front of us, but in any case, not the best. What other options? Rook f4 now. Take rook g4 first. Rook g4 and rook f4 are the main moves which you recommended, guys. Okay, so look. Here, actually, if you play rook f4, it makes perfect sense. Uh, white can't take on f4 because there, there will be rook c1, queen c1 check and uh, well if they don't do that and they just simply push the c7 we'll just grab this on f1 rook takes and bring the queen here just we can capture on the next move and it will be fine just in case rook f7 will not work because there will be queen c1 check main threat therefore in this position uh, after Rook f4, why just plays rook g1? Or they can even try rook e1. They hit the coin and they again push the pawn forward. That's why it's not the right decision here to play as black rook f4. We can give it a try of rook g4 but still c7 and there are some problems. Well, black has a couple of continuations which actually hold straw here. But I want to show you the best and the most practical decision. When we have the queens on the board, you know guys that there are good possibilities of making some perpetual checks, right? Why should we not give it a try? We can play rook h4 right now. We hit this h2 pawn. Uh, well, after rook h4, if white plays some like h3, we can just simply take it and it's perpetual checks. And if he doesn't go for this move, h3 and just simply push the pawn forward let's say he doesn't care about it it's actually time to take the pawn king takes queen h6 check if king goes back there will be queen e3 rook f2 is impossible because we just grab the rook on c1 and if the king goes back on h file there will be queen h6 perpetual checks obviously white can play some like king g3 to play this stuff here, but again there will be queen e3 check here. Or you can also try queen g5 check. King goes here, queen f4. There will be many other moves actually here. For instance, if he just goes on this direction, king f3 he plays, queen f5, king e3, queen e5. And just perpetual checks, king cannot hide on b1 because there will be queen e4. The, uh, the variation goes till the end here, but this will lead to perpetual checks and black will save the position. So, as you can see guys, in this one column position, we found too many resources as white and as black. So, my recommendation will be to always check the concrete variations and exactly ask yourself, what is your opponent's real threat. 
All right, let's check the next position, right? So this position was drawn all along. Uh, actually, no, because uh, black could try knight d7, which leads to much better position for them, even winning. I mentioned it at the beginning of this position. All right, time to check the next one now. So the next position will be a bit more uh, complicated indeed. This game was played uh, between Vladimirov and Lepke a long time ago, both are grandmasters as far as I know. And well, it's black to move here, and they took on g2. First of all, we need to evaluate it. Um, materially, we are just down a pawn, we just lost a pawn here, but let's discuss about the main things right now to not talk about much about some other details. Our king is in big trouble. We have almost no defenders. And he has one, two, three, and potentially four attackers. Maybe even fifth. He can use his rook in action here. So, right now, after knight g2, obviously it's super complicated to make the decisions right now and so on. Uh, when we get these kind of positions, we panic immediately. We're not really calculating too much, and we just see that, okay, we're gonna lose the game, so it doesn't really matter, and after playing the game, maybe if you played over the board, coming back home and checking it with an engine, and you see that, oh my god, I really had a good chance to hold it. But it's really so computerized, I can't do that, and so on. I've heard about this actually from many title players as well. But it's completely wrong mindset. If you want to learn the proper defensive technique, you need to force yourself to calculate till the end. And possibly all the variations which is possible. In this case, it's obviously you need to start with um, concrete moves, such as captures, maybe checks or something like that. The first thing all the time which you need to calculate is what if we just accept this sacrifice? And we just take on g2. What happens next? What does he want to do next? After that, queen goes on h4 and hits this h2 pawn. In the game, uh, they played f4 right now because it's really dangerous threat. Just in case, I don't really think that rook h1 gives us anything because there will be some like bishop h3 check. If king f3, there will be a checkmate. And if king goes back again, there will be a checkmate threat. So the only move is f4 to cut this diagonal, but in any case it, le it leads to losing posi position because there is rook e3, a bunch of threats. Queen h3, bishop h3, and so on. Knight f1 was played in the game, bishop takes f4, we can't grab this uh, rook because there will be rook h2, queen h2, queen f2, bishop f3 check, and king goes on g1. After bishop f3, actually white resigned, but the point here is that after queen g5 here, if white plays knight g3, black has a beautiful tactic, which is rook captures on d3. We obviously can't take it back, because there will be bishop b3 and we drop the queen. Otherwise, it's here, here, and too many threats. So after knight g2, as I mentioned, white just panicked, and that's why they took on g2 right away. What do you think, guys? What will be the right decision right now as white? Take on h7 and then capture the knight. Actually, I think uh, it doesn't really make much sense and it doesn't really change much. Still the same problems, if you will have the bishop on d3 or not, doesn't solve the issues. Bishop f1, king f1, try to run, take on b7, okay, bishop f5 as well. I see you have many recommendations here. Okay, so let me explain you guys. The right decision actually here was to take the pawn on b7. Well, 
uh, it's not like you're attacking all the queen signs right now and it's not the flank where you need to focus and so on. It's just all about trying to get rid of the attacker here, which is d6 bishop. It's quite annoying, right? Uh, threatens bishop h2, he wants to play something like queen h4 and so on. So it's not a uh, misplaced move, let's say. After knight b7, first of all we need to calculate what if he just captures another pawn here. We can just take it. Queen goes on h4, and if king g2, let's say there will be bishop h3, surprisingly enough, king goes on h1 right now, and black doesn't have much to do right now. If they move the bishop, let's say on g4, king still goes back here. For instance, if they will make some slow move right now, white will be able to play even knight f3 at some point, or bring the rook already on g1 a bit later, perhaps, or just... They actually have some good defensive resources. But let me show you one thing here. After knight b7, uh, I will go come to this variation a bit later. I'll explain what's going on there. Uh, after knight b7, here black has two main options. First is queen g5, and second is queen h4. I'm pretty sure, guys, if you'll be totally honest, you had this kind of positions and you were really so. Um, lazy to calculate all the variations and you just chose maybe one of the forced variation and you didn't really care that much what was happening there. It's the wrong mindset if you want to have a good performances in your defense. So, after knight b7, if queen goes on h4, which is take on d6 and that's all, he doesn't have anything. This knight is not doing anything here, and he doesn't have any normal threats as well. So he needs to play something like queen g5, which actually looks a bit more tempting. But there will be knight d6, and knight captures on e3. If you play something like bishop h3 right now, plan will be to move their knight somewhere else, maybe on e1, or maybe f4 or just whatever, perhaps on h4 here, to make a checkmate threat, white has a good defensive resource. We hit the queen here. So if we move the knight away, now we'll just grab on g5. So queen gets there on g4, bishop takes h7, king can't go on h8 due to this funny checkmate on f7, king has to go on f8, and after that we just play queen f5. There are no checks, well, no reasonable checks, obviously, and we're going to exchange the queens. We will be up a piece, so position, obviously, will be um, winning for us. After queen g5, we already checked the variations. We checked this queen h4. But even though after knight b7, it seems like white might survive, black has a strong move. We sort of checked this variation. Bishop takes h2, king takes h2, queen h4 check, king g2, bishop h3 and king h1. I'm sure you remember this position. Now black actually has a pretty strong move which wins the game. So even from starting position the game was not drawish. We cannot really hold the position. But I'm curious which move would you make right now as black? Better to flip the board. Any suggestions? <laughs> this is true, but it's really concrete situations, you know, guys. You shouldn't, like, think that uh, you should just panic and so on. Uh, you have to make the right decisions with calculation process here. You have to calm down, first of all, and try to do your best. And one more thing, obviously you have to ask yourself what is your opponent's main threat and how does he achieve that. How would you defend this under time pressure with not much time to calculate? Um, it's really complicated, most likely nobody can do that. Unfortunately.
Okay, rook e6. You're absolutely right. Rook e6 actually is the key move right now. Brings the rook in action, and white can't really hold this position anymore. Queen f2 looks tempting. Three turns, queen g2, checkmate maybe. Why not? But if, black, if white just moves the knight away, for instance, playing something like, wondering what if I play knight f1, I just hold this g2, right? Okay, we can play bishop g2, but he just still goes up and nothing really changes. So rook goes on e6 here, and black actually wins the game. But I want to uh, you to focus on one topic right now, guys. When you're trying to defend the positions, uh, it's not all about... Uh, calculation here of forced moves. It's all you also have to check the moves which are not forced, such as rook e6. That's what makes it much more complicated. Because people can really calculate these variations till the end. Go for some like bishop g4, queen h3, since everything is with the checks, obviously it's really complicated, it's not easy at all, but it's much easier than checking some other options such as him activating the pieces, bringing them in the action and so on. So when you see that your opponent has a threat of sacrifice, maybe, can take on g2 let's say when he sacrificed on g2 or just go for bishop h2 or just whatever, some kind of sacrifices, don't only calculate forced variations. First of all, it has to be forced variations, makes sense, but the next step already should be that, okay, what if he just has this position and, okay, maybe bishop g4 doesn't work, bishop f1 doesn't work. What if he just bring his pieces in attack? What happens next? Such as rook e6 and so on, which I'm pretty sure both sides missed and that's why they had some difficulties. So, let's go back to the starting position. Knight g2 obviously wins the game, but why didn't even give it a try to play this knight b7? They took on g2 and they lost much faster than they actually could. They lost without any battle. That's the point. Is that understandable, guys, or you have some questions on these positions? Good, it's clear. Okay, so look, uh, one more time I want you to focus on one thing, guys. For those who just joined us, we're about to finish our course about Art of Defense. I want to repeat one more time what you need to remember about defense. Let's go back to the first position. Uh, this is really so interesting one, by the way. I gave it to my students. Uh, this position and um, most of them really struggled to find even first couple of moves and so on and one of my students managed to calculate all the variations till the end because I was just pushing him to keep going calculate till the end it's possible but we just sort of stop calculating here at some point and we're trying to avoid it even though it's really easy and obvious what to do on the next on the next step in any case I will remind you guys the uh, the general rules which you need to remember about defense. So part of calculation should be commonplace. Exactly that's what I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, I'm just finding it really difficult to calculate so many complex lines. Any tips for that or just practice? Practice and doing it consistently. And also you have to uh, calculate properly and there is also some calculation discipline. Well, unfortunately, this is not our main topic, and it will bring us really so far uh, to discuss about it, but, uh, well, um, there are many good tricks about it. Maybe next time we'll have this possibility to talk about these topics. One more time I'll repeat, guys, for you to remember properly. First, identify the real threats. Don't panic. 
look at the normal threats. What is his real threat? Uh, don't say that you don't mention that you have seen ghosts in the end of the day. So just make sure that his threat is real and it's dangerous for you. This is first. Second, try to keep your pieces protected. These are just mostly for beginners and maybe in club for club players as well. Just know that because sometimes they're just missing the opportunities to, you know, like they just blunder the pieces or something like that. So make sure that your pieces are protected. Of course, depends on concrete situation, but in any case. Well, the third thing here which you need to remember is that when you're short in space, when your opponent's pieces are extremely active, controls all the places here, all the space here, make sure that you have some possibilities to simplify the position. Exchange some pieces, and it will help you to protect your position better. The fourth step is if you're under attack and you're struggling to hold the position, if it's possible, try to exchange some pieces. So there will be less pressure for your weak side. And the last part, but certainly not the least, is when you're in trouble and you realize that you can't hold this position anymore, the best defense in chess is attack. So try your best to create some dangerous counterplay in this case. Now tell me guys if you have any questions before we finish our stream. Thank you for the stream, very informative. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. Uh, well, uh, Daniel, you can actually check this in the beginning of the stream. I mentioned, I talked about this position, and you can check what happened. The position on the board, that's exactly what I talked actually in the beginning, so you can check this out, go back on the stream or check the videos here and you'll be able to see all variations there. Which openings would you recommend for a 1500 rated player? Um, well, just uh, try to stick with the simple variations, please. Don't overcomplicate and learn too many variations. Um, and just practice it over and over and by practice, by experience, it actually comes there which kind of uh, style you like, strategical, tactical or somewhere in the, in the middle and you'll be able to find a uh, really good opening variation for that. It's really thing of taste, indeed. Okay guys, uh, seems like there are no other questions. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this was uh, Level Up Your Chess, powered by CoChess. Um, about the art of defense. Make sure to remember these rules what we just discussed today. Use it in your game and never forget one rule. The best defense is attack. Thank you for watching and 